In this exercise, what I'd like to do is start to place in dimensions. You can find your dimensions underneath the Annotate tab. You'll see that there's a dimension section, and in this section, there's a lined, linear, angular, radial, diameter, and arc length options for the different kinds of dimensions that you can place. I'll go ahead and mention that the arc length dimension, what it allows you to do is pick one spot along an arc, pick another spot along an arc, and then it will place a dimension, much like the dimensions you see currently on the screen, along that distance between the first spot and the second spot that you clicked along the arc. Radial and diameter will both give you either the radius or the diameter of whatever circle it is that you pick. Angular, that will give you the angle between the first wall that you select and the next wall that you select, or lines that you select or any objects that you select. Linear dimensioning goes straight across, so it would be from left to right or up and down. A line will place a dimension which is aligned with those walls that you're trying to dimension. So if your wall is at an angle, your dimension will be at an angle as well. My personal favorite is going to be the aligned dimension because you can do so much with it. And we'll take a look at that here in just a moment. But let's start off by using the linear dimension. So select on linear. And what I'd like to do is do a dimension from this intersection. So click right at the intersection where these two mullions come together. Zoom in to the other side of your building. Pick the intersection where those mullions come together. And you can pull this dimension string up and then click wherever you'd like it to be placed. We zoom in, we can see that this overall dimension is 84 feet 5 inches. In this case, there is what's called a background mask associated with this dimension. So as a result of that, this line that otherwise would be going through it, leading up toward where the circle of the three is at, is being masked by the dimension itself. But if you don't like that, and I just hit escape a couple of times to get out of the command, all you need to do is select on the dimension line. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this piece of text over. And you'll see, as I move the dimension over, you'll get a leader that moves over along with it and will always point back at that original dimension line. So in this case, we can still tell this 84 feet 5 inches, and it's pointing back to this dimension. Now in this case, we really probably don't need to have this leader here. If we want to remove the leader so it doesn't even show up, we can do that by selecting on the dimension. Underneath the options bar on top, you can clear the check mark for leader, and you'll see that that leader line will now go away. Now I'm just going to click to finish off that command. And we could continue to do dimensions like that going down the side. Annotate, Linear, pick that intersection right there, and it's really hard to see. It's one of the reasons why I dislike using Linear at times. Click that endpoint there, and then pull it over in this direction. Now I'm going to select back on that line, clear the leader checkbox so I don't get that extra little leader line showing up, and then I'm going to drag the text by clicking on the little dot there, and drag it just down so it's no longer touching this line. So linear dimensioning allows you to click one spot, click another spot, and then you'll get an overall dimension for that length. A line though, like I mentioned earlier, is probably my favorite dimension to use. If you select on a line, there's a couple of different ways to use an align dimension. First off, we should know that we're going to be dimensioning to the wall faces, or maybe to the wall center lines. Or we can even do it to the core faces, which would be the face of the structural members inside of the wall. And we have our choice as to what it is we like to dimension to. In this case, I think I'm going to actually choose the faces of core. By choosing on the faces of core, when I start to place these dimensions, it's going to go from the finished face of those structural members. I'd like to place a dimension string just going across the interior right here. So I'm going to start by picking this line on the inside edge of the men's room. I'm going to pick another line there. I'm going to completely skip over these walls here just for now. And then click here, come over, click again, click again on the next face of the wall. And then click on the face of the wall there along the break room. And you can see that I can begin to move these dimensions up or down and place them wherever I would choose along this room. In this case, so that I can kind of get away from most things, I'm going to come all the way down toward the very bottom and then click and hit escape a couple times on the keyboard. 
At this point, I'm going to select back on that dimension string. I'm going to move this 18 foot dimension over by clicking on the little grip and pulling it over. You'll see that if I wanted to, I could always remove the leader so that that leader is no longer associated with that dimension. You'll see that I have this 0 feet 3 and 5 eighths inch dimension. I'm going to pull it over as well. We're looking at this 0 feet 3 and 5 eighths inch dimension. Typically, we usually don't have this 0 feet. Most people that I know don't do that. Type in UN, and that's going to activate the units command. Come up here to length. And you're going to see a gray bar here, and it says 1 foot 5, 11, 30 seconds. Click in that area, and then put a check mark next to suppress 0 feet, and click on OK. Move down, select on OK again, and you'll notice that any place where it has a 0 foot dimension, it's now removed it. Now it just says 3 and 5 eighths of an inch. And it would have done that on any other dimension as well, where that condition would have occurred. I'm going to select back on this dimension now, and I'm going to put leader. And you can see how this leader is now coming in, and it's pointing down in this general area. Something else that I want to show, right now all these lines are looking pretty thin. For you, you might have some thickness associated with these lines. The reason why mine look fairly thin is because underneath the View tab, I have thin lines turned on. If I turn my thin lines off, we'll then see the thickness associated with both the dimensions as well as the lines that they're associated with. Over here where I have this 18 foot 6 and 7 16 dimension, I'm going to click this and just start to drag this back over again, and you can see what it tries to do. The only drawback to doing this the way that I did it, by going click, 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 is that this is still going to be assumed to be all part of the same dimension string. So this particular dimension either is going to have to have the leader, or else it won't have the leader at all. So that's one of the things you have to think about when you're placing your dimensions by clicking all the way on across, is am I going to run into a condition where I don't want one of these to have a leader? If that's the case, you might want to do that as a separate dimension apart from clicking all the way on over. So you'd click, 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 stop the command, do another dimension, in this case the 18 foot 6 and 7 16 so that this one specifically would not have a leader associated with it. And we could continue to separate these out if we wanted to by just clicking on the dots, pulling them down, pulling them over, and placing them wherever it made sense for our dimension strings. What we've done there, and I'm just going to come back up to the Annotate tab, was one way that you can use the Align dimension. But there's another way as well. So I'm going to select on the Align command, and instead of Pick Individual References, I'm going to do Pick Entire Walls. Select on Options. And in this case, put a check mark next to openings. So it's going to auto dimension the openings and click on OK. What I'd like to do is now place a dimension up here on this wall. I'm going to add a quick disclaimer. This does not work very well on curtain walls. You'll still need to use the individual clicking method if you're going to dimension curtain walls. But for your basic Revit wall types, this works great. I'm going to move in here and I'm going to select on this wall right here. And we can see that it's dimensioned each one of these window openings on center all the way on across. Now maybe we didn't want this to be dimensioned on center. Maybe we wanted it to be dimensioned to the edge of the openings themselves. We could have done that too. Once again, underneath options here, and instead of having openings being to the centers, we could have chosen openings being to the widths instead. Click on OK. Now I'm going to dimension this wall right here. And we can see that it's done it to the widths now. The way that we originally told this the dimension is to the faces of core. That's the reason why this dimension strain is going to the location that it's at. But we can adjust this after the fact as well. I'm going to click right here where this dot is at, and I'm going to hold my mouse button down and drag this to the outside edge and let go. And you can now see it's dimensioning to the outside edge of the wall. You could do the same thing up here. Click, hold your mouse button down, and drag it to the outside edge. When it highlights, you can let go, and it'll adjust those dimensions accordingly. I'm going to hit escape a couple times on my keyboard just to get out of the command. I'm going to select on this dimension string going across the top. And I also want to mention there's one other thing that you can do. Instead of clicking and holding your mouse button down, you can just click once and it'll start to cycle through all the different things that it can dimension to. In this case, it's continuing to try to dimension to the faces of the core. On the other hand, if we change this to be wall faces instead, and now try to click on this dot and see if it makes any difference in this case. Okay, it's not making a difference, so just click on the dot and drag it out to the end, let go, 
and you can see it's now going to go out to the end. If this had been set at wall faces by default, that's where the dimension would have went to by default. Instead of just to the inside edge, it would have went to the outside edge, the wall face instead. So it just would have dimensioned it correctly. Now we're going to zoom back out again. We can see that it's placed those dimensions in each of those locations. This also works pretty well if you're going to be dimensioning such things as some of your interior walls. If we take a look at the aligned dimension one more time, the entire walls, wall faces is going to work just fine for me. As far as this, I can do intersecting walls as well. Click on OK. I'm going to pick this wall, and now any wall that intersects this wall, this wall, this wall, this wall, this wall, will now get a dimension. Click, and you can see that dimension string is going to get created for each one of these individual walls. Now, I don't really want to place this one because I've done most of this already down here, so I'm just going to hit the Escape key on my keyboard to get out of the dimensioning command. I don't really have a good radius to dimension to, so I'm not going to show the radial or diameter. But basically, it's just a matter of selecting the command, selecting the circle, and it'll automatically place it in there. With arc length, it's basically the same way. You click arc length, click the arc you want to dimension, click the two spots on the arc that you want the dimension to dimension to, and it'll automatically give you the dimension. And then with angular, you click the one surface, you click the next surface, and then tell it where you'd like that angle to go to. So being able to place those dimensions, always remember that's underneath the Annotate tab. You'll have your dimension tools here. And the ones you're most likely to use are probably going to be linear and aligned. And my guess is, is when it's all said and done, you'll probably use aligned the most often. Because if you choose the entire walls option, you can then choose the options button and then pick whether or not you want a dimension to intersecting walls or to openings to run a really quick dimension strain all the way across that particular wall.